Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to go to something that uh, deals with trade because you export a lot, Ms. Mitschke. Uh, uh, it seems like this administration is referring to free trade agreements. Uh, they use the words kind of a 20th century trading tool. This makes maintaining our trade relationships and expanding market access for U.S. dairy products even more vital to the strength of our domestic cattle and dairy uh, industries and the economic health of rural America. What more could the United States government do to protect and expand overseas market access? And then maybe in the process of answering that, you could give me your view on the Indo-Pacific economic framework if indeed market access is not available. So let's start with maybe uh, three things to consider. And, and this is what's really important uh, on behalf of dairy farmers and much of agriculture. We believe that FTAs are critical, that we need to get back in the game of establishing uh, those agreements, particularly that, that two-way trade relationship with uh, Southeast Asia, Japan, uh, the UK, there is a growing global hunger for dairy production, and as shared in my testimony, we can meet that with the right agreements and the right tools. Also important to look at the, the tariff and non-tariff barriers that stand in our way. Uh, oftentimes, those are, are more silent, but uh, very, very critical. As far as your, your comment about uh, the Indo-Pacific region, I would, uh, I would maybe address that with a, a few items to consider. And one would be um, uh, that comment I made about commitments on common names, streamlining regulatory requirements, and then finally uh, tariff agreements such as Indo-Pacific, all of those can help us. Yeah. What I hear from reading about the uh, countries that are involved with the Indo-Pacific uh, framework set up is that it's a, good, it's a very important step for the United States to move forward to do that. But the fact that it doesn't have any uh, trade provisions along the lines of moving towards free trade, it's not going to really serve a very useful function. That's what I've read about. We are, we are committed to opening up any trade uh, avenues that are possible, and, and that's a really big yeah. statement, but in general, that's yeah. the guiding principle. Yeah. Hey, you know, so uh, same to you as well. Uh, you know, we don't have a chief agricultural trade negotiator uh, at uh, uh, USTA we, and, and USDA Undersecretary for Trade. Uh, I, I'm glad to see that the administration has made some progress, at least in nominating what appears to be two qualified people. But uh, what opportunities do you think American agriculture may be missing out on since we do not have these uh, positions filled after a year and a half? I'm really going to go back to the importance of the big picture uh, of trade and open markets and the fact that uh, to speak for dairy, one out of every six days of milk is exported. So we need focus on those export opportunities. And to repeat a stat that I gave earlier in my testimony, that of the last five years, four of those years, we've seen the most growth in, in exports, not, not domestic growth. So just very important from a big picture aspect. Mr. Fisher, this is my last question, but in regard to uh, the fact that we're all talking, particularly since Ukraine was invaded, uh, about w uh, food shortages around the world. What will the decreased supply of fertilizer paired with increased prices affect world food supply? Well, this is a, Senator Grassley, this is a, 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 I think, a very big concern, and it's related in many ways to the geopolitical situation, but also our own energy policy. Uh, when we're looking at fertilizer and inputs, things like that are, are the lifeblood, as we know, of, of modern agriculture. And so I, I think there's a, any time we disturb that situation, we're looking at, uh, my son is a, is a very active farmer right now, and he's in the process of, of just finishing up seeding where he can, and, and that fertilizer bill is going to be huge this year. But actual availability 
is, is even more scary than what you have to pay for it. And so I think this is, this is something very serious. And I think also in a, in a state like my, our home state where we, we're good at agriculture, we're good at the energy industry, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, product that, that would make, make good fertilizer in, that, uh, in the, uh, the natural gas industry and that sort of thing that's available there as well. So I think we have to look at all options on both sides, on the input side and on our output side for, for all options, for biofuels, for, for the, uh, but also we can produce some of our own fertilizer right here. Yeah, uh, I don't have another question, but let me just finish with this comment. I, everything I've read about the eight and three tenths percent inflation rate we have, 40 to 50% of it is caused by energy and this president's energy policy. I think it's outrageous that we're having uh, uh, $5 gasoline and the poor people of this country are the ones that are suffering as a result of it. And uh, I think that ought to be taken into consideration and just reverse these bad policies of the last year that have run uh, the in gasoline cost to what it is. 